Consuming 20 grams of almonds 30 minutes before each major meal significantly reduces the postprandial hyperglycemia or glucose spike in Asian Indians, a new research study has found. The study, authored by Dr. Seema Gulati, Center for Nutrition Research, National Diabetes, Obesity and Cholesterol Foundation, and Dr. Anup Mishra, Chairman Forte's CDOC Hospital for Diabetes and Allied Sciences, recommends having 20 grams or 17 to 18 number of almonds before every meal, breakfast, lunch and dinner. 20 grams of almonds contain 2.9 grams of fiber and have 116 calories. Not just this, studies have also found that almonds reduce heart disease risk by lowering total and LDL cholesterol. In this video, we discussed with Dr. Mishra and Dr. Gulati on why almonds should be included in our diets, what are the other three nuts which provide the equivalent result as almonds, and what are the warning signs of pre-diabetes which will help people in understanding the disease. So sir, it was really an insightful discussion on uh, almonds and how it helps in diabetes. Like many of us even didn't know that almonds can actually help in diabetes. So uh, apart from the research related uh, terms and everything that uh, we have discussed before, how would you convince a common man? to have almonds and how would you explain that this will help in diabetes? What would be the common way to make them understand? I always say that almonds are actually like, like a gold nugget. It is not only for diabetes. We are looking at the betterment of whole metabolism as well as the heart. You know, yeah. this has implication for heart also. Yes. So, diabetes is one. Betterment of the metabolism is second. The blood flow in the artery that becomes better is third thing. But one thing should be borne in mind for anybody who is listening there, common man, that they should be, once they are incorporated within the diet, then something has to be deleted from the diet. So they, it cannot be. If today you're eating everything, on top of that you're eating 40 almonds, then there is a problem because yeah. calories will be added there. So you remove one chapati, you remove a little bit of rice, one bread and instead add almond, that will be something which is going to be beneficial for the whole body. Ma'am, by the time people develop diabetes, they also have several other health complications as well. So this study applies to them, them as well for other uh, health issues. Can those people also, they include uh, 20 grams of almonds per day? See, if they have issues with their kidneys, then yes, they have to be watchful because uh, they are rich source of potassium also. But otherwise, you know, diabetes is overall metabolic dysregulation. So all the problems are arising from uh, insulin resistance and, you know, excess blood glucose. So here in this study, we are not only telling them how much to eat, you know, normally which we counsel patients, it is about what to eat first and how to eat. Just a slight alteration. You are eating almonds anyways, but if you just change the timings, you know, just a small change, it can make so much of difference. So yes, uh, uh, if they don't have any, you know, end organ disease or any, you know, major, uh, you know, catabolic uh, condition, then they can definitely consume uh, almonds. There is no harm. So one more question is, what is the ideal way of eating the almond? Because many people will say, we have eaten it, so we have 20 grams of almonds. Ho so what is the ideal way? I talk simple, uh, I, I talk in a very simple manner to a patient. I do not say these many grams, etc. Don't even say these many almonds, because you can't start counting the almonds. I say, have one fistful of once you have one fistful, half in the morning, half in the night, and that should be enough to take care of your metabolism in a better manner. But if you go by this study, then we have to do a lot more. And then we have to change the sequence before, 30 minutes before the meal. And that too, almond that she has mentioned in our study, so 670 to 18 almond, 20. Uh, so that, those are the kind of things that we have to do, which is sometimes difficult 
to do but you can do, take less almonds also for example there is another study which showed that even 10 almonds before 30 minutes before meal will help so that changing the sequence taking a right amount of almond and fitting it in, in, in your pocket in the sense that you don't have to spend too much of money here you will be better your metabolism will be better your sugar will be better so talking about money almond is not cheap we all know that so what other tree nut is has equivalent benefits as almond one thing is if you calculate the cost and 15 almonds uh, um, generally they are priced like 800 rupees a kg or 900 rupees a kg so 15 almonds will be about 12 rupees or so which is about the cost of a packet of chips right so even in rural area why you know pre-diabetes is increasing because these uh, you know uh, junk foods are available at cheaper rate that is one thing second is if, if you are asking like uh, what are the cheaper nuts uh, peanuts though they are not nuts they are a legume botanically speaking but they have nut like properties you know the high mufa content and uh, the fiber content and vit vitamin e etc so those can be also incorporated and uh, regarding almonds you know you don't take say 15 almonds but at least five six almonds seven almonds you know less number which people are you know spending so much money on biscuits and namkeens and, and chips uh, and cold drinks and ice creams so that way is i really don't think that you know almonds are a, a expensive item anymore yeah. one one uh, suggestion is here yeah, after looking at all the research in this area you can mix a little bit of almond in vegetables and take vegetable almond mixture half an hour before. That'll be if you think that money is the problem, then this could be one option. Yes, Thank you so much for breaking down the price factor. <laughs> Next question is a very basic one. What if we eat more than the prescribed number of almonds? What if we overdo almond consumption? What are the adversities people would because some people they think that if we eat more it will be better for our health so that is a very common question see everything we always focus on balanced diet you know any good things should also be eaten in moderation you know within the recommended uh, you know allowance so we have a quota for fat also you know it, the fat intake should not exceed 30 percent of the total calories so excess of anything is bad as we know so it should be within the limit but yes yeah, and uh, uh, there is no um, what should I say drastically you know harmful effect if you uh, have a overdose of almonds there is no toxic effect I would say but yes you may feel heavy and you know the you may have issues with the digestion and the good part of uh, including almonds in the diet the satiating uh, quality is very uh, you know uh, high you know, you feel uh, the you have a feeling of fullness after eating a small portion only. So there is a very uh, you know low chance that you will take overdose of almonds. What were the challenges you faced during this research study? As I mentioned, you know the participants we had to withdraw blood after every thirty minutes. You know, so that was a challenge, and we are truly truly thankful to each and every participant of the study. They had so much of faith in us, and they cooperated so well. So that was one challenge and then uh, compliance is always a challenge you know for three months if you make them stick to a protocol you know a dietary regime it is a challenge because we are a country of you know different festivities and it's you know celebration and we always associate food with celebration and that they were of different age groups. yes different age groups but one thing i would say that the improvement in blood glucose readings you know because we gave them glucose meters and they were monitoring their blood glucose every day so that was a very big motivation for the participants to stick to the you know diet you know when they saw that okay if i have taken a pre-meal load of almonds and my blood glucose readings are coming down so they were really motivated to stick to the dietary regime so but these were challenges but uh, you know compliance check is always a challenge so with close monitoring close uh, uh, you know uh, uh, contact with the patient you know frequent conversations meeting their relatives also you know uh, you know so that we we try to ensure that they follow what we tell them in fact uh, the almonds were given to the whole family yeah so that you know not one person only eats almond but the rest of the family also eats. otherwise they will 
take from the same water bottle but we have given so everybody takes a little bit then the resultant is the less amount is eaten by the patient so that's what we did we you know any uh, study regarding diet in india is so challenging while in the west it is still much better here it is so challenging because we have so many social issues and marriages and parties and, and so on. diversity in food culture also. Absolutely. So, uh, pre-diabetes, uh, like many people miss the signs of pre-diabetes. By the time they notice the signs, it is they are already diabetic. So what are the warning signs that people should be aware of that they are? Very good question. I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, <clears throat> there is no signs of pre-diabetes. Let me tell you that. As opposed to diabetes, where 50% have some symptoms and signs, uh, pre-diabetes there are none. So who should we suspect pre-diabetes? That is a question. And suspicion for pre-diabetes would be in several categories of patients. People who are obese, clearly, who have abdominal obesity, who have family history of diabetes. Women who have given birth to the babies, which are overweight babies. Women who are in, in perimenopausal or postmenopausal status. People who have had blood pressure or cholesterol dis or disorder or heart disease and the, the women who have history of polycystic ovarian disease in the childhood or teenage. These are the people who are vulnerable and uh, we have proposed earlier that the blood sugar monitoring should be done from 25 years onward in everybody but more so in this category of patients. And the sugar monitoring should be oral glucose tolerance test, the way we have explained, to blood sugar values. Currently, the government in India's guidelines are 30 years. Beyond 30 years, is the screening is advisable to everybody. What we propose is, should be less than 30 years, 25 years. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Nan, for your time.